every opportunity you have, my dear sisters and brothers, to get closer to Allah, don't waste it. As simple as assalamu alaikum. And you take it from there. So alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair for having me. It's an amazing gathering. I love the place. And I'm so grateful, not because I'm here, but because Allah allowed us all to be here. Last year is not that long. It's less than 12 months. What is it, 14, 13 months? 15 months? When I was so excited to come because this is a new place and everybody was telling me, you don't know how beautiful it is. And we planned and planned. And who's the best planner? What did he decide? You all stay home. It's less than a year. We should never forget this. Because if you forget it, you will not be grateful to this. And I was so worried when I got the invitation. It's like, Ya Allah, please make it happen this time. Can he make it again? And stay home again? So don't forget to be grateful. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ I don't hear it. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ if you are grateful, I'll give you more. The scary part of this verse is actually in Surah Ibrahim. It's not this one. Because we all do that. If you're good to me, I'll be good to you. It's the second part. And kufr here is not you don't believe in Allah. Kufr here, you're not grateful. Because the original meaning of kufr is actually you conceal something. وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ If you're not grateful. إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Look what Allah said. إِنَّ verily عَذَابِي His, his. Not mine and yours. عَذَابِي The ya is goes to Allah. لا He is emphasizing. And then شديد. He didn't say عظيم. And there's a lot of difference for those of you who are familiar. Knows the difference. عظيم and شديد. But linguistically شديد is stronger. And even the letters in them with the qalqala and all. La shadid. This reminds me and you. Let's stop complaining. Let's say, Rabbi lak alhamd. Alhamdulillah, when I landed, alhamdulillah. When I was able to go to the hotel, alhamdulillah. And then when he made it and now up, alhamdulillah. And I mean it. It's not alhamdulillah. You know tip of the tongue? It's alhamdulillah. So all of you, everybody. And the way we show Allah, alhamdulillah, is not just saying it, it's practice it. And one of them is, take opportunity of every minute, as Shaykh Abdullah said, not only to learn, but to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my opportunity. I don't know if I'm living tomorrow. And you know, I loved what you said. How many people would love to be alive this moment? Let alone Sunday, the first day of the Hijjah. So be grateful. We are a nation, I'm talking about us living in the West, nation of complaint. We have to find something to complain about. How are you not good? Why? So I don't want to discuss and not focus on what I was asked to talk, but just came to my mind when I'm seeing this. And number two, may Allah reward the two young brothers, Utitum Mazamira Dawood, if you remember who said that. Rasulullah sallallahu when he used to hear Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud recite the Qur'an, he used to tell him, you have the voice of Dawood, and he called it Mazamir, the flute. It's amazing. And you know what's the amazing? There's a lot of people in this world have beautiful voices, but what are they using it for? And here you go, two young people, two young gentlemen, and may Allah bless your parents, I always say this, and they are using it to teach us and make us enjoy his words, subhana, and then the praise of Rasul I hope you all followed what the nasheed was all about. It was all about Rasul So as I have said this, I want to come to what I was asked to talk about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Shaykh Abdul Wahid said, talked about Sayyidina Ibrahim a lot in the Quran, actually, in different ways. The one that really, immediately I say, Ya Allah, I would love to meet Sayyidina Ibrahim, is the verse in Surah Al-Nahl. It's the last page of Surah Al-Nahl. Inna Ibrahima kana, anybody knows? Inna Ibrahima kana? La. Ummatan. 
umma qanitan lillahi hanifan wa lam yakun min al-mushrikin pay attention to the first word umma you know what's umma has so many meanings in the quran here nation he was one person one one but he was equal to nation question to everybody here can i say i am equal to a nation can you say it can anyone claim it who was he that allah described him as ummah so this is one of the things we want to learn this weekend why he was ummah and why i am not yet yet ummah and can i be an ummah can i be a nation all you young looking at me can you be in 10 years from now a nation yes you can never say no yes you can but it's not easy so that's the first thing when i talk about sayyidna ibrahim second which is related to the topic allah said to ibrahim that's why he was umma wa adhin fi an-nas bil hajj ya'tuka rijala wa ala kulli dhamir ya'tina min kulli fajj amiq this is in surah al hajj what did allah said to sayyidna ibrahim he was only one one in makkah there's nothing there's no kaaba there is no buildings there's no tower there's no the clock if anybody of you have been there there's nothing and he said ibrahim alayhi salam call and if you read the commentary on this he says ya allah call what there's nothing as then call your ummah your nation they will come you call i will get them there wa adhin fi nasi bil hajj that's why we go how many of you were planning to go to hajj last year show me hands not this year i know but last year right but allah didn't allow us but inshallah ya rabbi i mean he rewarded us because we stayed because of an excuse adhin fi an-nas bil hajj what is hajj what is this sacred journey we all talk about i'm going to ask cuz i want you to be with me i don't want you to start sleeping or looking at your phones what is hajj what is the word hajj mean Anybody knows? Don't tell me going to Mecca. I know that. What does the word mean? I hear it. Al-qasd. What does that mean in English? Sisters, what is the problem? I know you know. 60, 70% of every class is usually women. Am I right? So what happened? What does qasd mean? I gave you the Arabic. What is the English? Louder. can't hear you but that's okay i'm sure you know al qast is your goal your aim like if you move from this stage you want to go to that door to go out and taqasid al bab or anti qasid al bab you want to go to that door hajj your aim is not to go to mecca because i go to mecca for umrah why is not called hajj this sacred journey you're going to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i'm going to share with you some of beautiful sayings imam ibn rajab has a beautiful book called lataif al ma'arif i'll translate it to you if you want to translate it literally it's the subtle beauty of something we know so if you look now at this and you say this is beautiful flowers and it's beautiful we all see it lataif al ma'arif there is there is a subtle beauty but if you of us will see it so all the book is about this and he took every thing allah asked us to do and he looked at the subtle beauty and he looked at hajj and i'm going to share with you some of what he said applies to you and me now because we are here we're not in mecca he said and i'm going to translate here so may allah help me to translate whomsoever is unable to go to arafah this year man fatahu al maqam bi arafah who cannot go to arafah look what he wants you to do he said falyaqum bi haqqihi alladhi arafah stand up it's the same word in arabic those of you who know arabic will enjoy it more stand up now here let alone next monday when it's going to be arafah here stand up as you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as you know his rights 
The reason we stand up in Arafah is not to stand up there and wearing white and it's very hot and you just make dua. That's not what Allah wants you and me to go. And that's not why it's called Arafah. Al Jannata Arafaha Lahum. The Jannah, He beautified it. He actually made it smell beautiful for them. Allah said this in Surah Muhammad. Arafah is a time and it's a place where you know yourself. It's only you with Allah wearing white, standing there wherever you are in Arafah, in that heat, and you're sobbing and crying, and Allah knows what you are telling him, and what are you asking. Do the same next Monday. The time and the place is not the issue, is where is your heart? You could be there, but your heart is here. And you are here, and your heart is there. Don't take it like every other Monday or like any other Monday. Don't take it literal, deep. And if you don't know what I'm talking about or you think this is very hard, ask Allah from today. Ya Allah, whatever you taught Imam Ibn Rajab, teach me, let me feel it. Ask Allah to give you the Arafah that you know yourself and you know who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when I started my journey with the Quran, and I remember the first Hajj, when I was studying in Saudi, the Sheikh who was with us, I remember in the first lecture, and he used to say, when you open the book of Allah, and this is for the Huffad specifically, when you open the book of Allah, and when you are reading it, don't just open it up. And he literally made us do this. He said, open up the Quran. I want you to put your finger on the Quran. Don't read anything. Just say this to yourself. هذا كلام ربي. This is the words of my Lord. We don't feel this way when we open the Quran. No. The Quran is somewhere there on the shelf. When someone dies or it's Ramadan, we pick it up. Even when I am a hafiz and I'm reviewing, I'm reviewing, I'm focusing on did I do the wow, the fa, the word. So the same thing, let's deep, let's go, let's go, let's dive deep into things. So Arafah next Monday is the time that you know who you are. And if I can ask everyone here who you are, don't tell me your name and don't tell me what you do. And if you ask me, I would love to tell you that I am and I want to be the servant of Allah. Abdullah, Amatullah. Because when I'm going to be standing in front of him and you and this private interview, who we will all have, you know that. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدَى Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment, single, one. I need you to feel this. We get so nervous when we have an interview for a job or for a college. How about when I have the interview with the Malik al-Mulk, with the one who owns everything? So here you go, this is what you need. Arafah next Monday, Ya Allah, make me be your servant. I don't know how, but you can, you can teach me. So he was saying, if you cannot stand up in Arafah in the place, stand up in front of Allah by the right that you know. Then he said, whomsoever cannot sit, cannot sleep in Muzdalifa, for those of you who went to Hajj that night, that you are in the middle of nowhere sleeping, man hajaza anil mabiti bi Muzdalifa, whomsoever cannot go and sleep in Muzdalifa, look at this one, and I'll say it in Arabic, فَلْيُبَيِّتْ عَزْمَهُ عَلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَقَدْ قَرَّبَهُ وَأَزْلَفَهَ It's the same word. Let him or her have this resolve, azm, to make Allah through his, you worshipping him to get closer to him. Because Muzdalifa, I don't know if you know the meaning of it, Muzdalifa, yes, it's the place, but actually the meaning of it is the place that's close. Let's just take a break and let's look back. When you go to Hajj, Hajj starts in Arafah. The haram is here. So we start from the furthest point and then we come to Muzdalifa, we're getting closer. Then we get to Mina or Muna and then we end up in Mecca, the day of Eid. 
So Mujdalifa, Jalifa, you're getting closer. So what the Imam Ibn Rajab is saying, when you cannot physically close to Allah in that place, have the resolve that through the worship, you worshiping Allah, you will get closer to him. What will bring me to Allah, close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not the way I look or what degree I have or how much money I have or, or what car I drive. It's who I am in his sight. Ummah, remember Ibrahim, Ummah? He had nothing. He had nothing, but he was Ummah, nation. Then he said, مَن لَمْ يُمَكِّنَهُ الْقِيَامُ بِأَرْجَاءِ الْخَيْفِ فَلْيَقُمْ بِحَقِّ الرَّجَاءِ وَالْخَوْفِ If you are unable, Al-Khayf is a mosque in Mina. It's a beautiful place. It's so crowded. You cannot even get there. He said, if you cannot be there physically, then stand up with the same word. Stand up with Allah, with the hope and khawf, because it's al-khayf. Ask Allah, and I really mean this word, and I, I ask Allah personally, let me be afraid of you, Ya Allah. We're so scared of people. We're so scared of human beings. What they will say about me? What do they think of me? Will they give me? Will they fire me? Right? Do they love me? Do they not love me? We're so focused on people. But how many of us have asked ourselves this question? Ya Allah, do you love me? Ya Allah, am I afraid of you? Am I scared of you? Do I love you? The real love, not the claim. The real love. Do I? Ask Allah in these 10 days, starting Sunday, inshallah, that he gives you these feelings. Wallahi, he will give it to you. Don't ask how. How is for you and me? Malik al-mulk, do it right away. And then he said, Man lam yaqdir ala nahri hadihi bimuna, fal yadbah hawahu huna wa qad balagha al-muna. Subhanallah. If you cannot slaughter the animal there in Muna, the last station of Hajj, Slaughter your desires. You know what's my desire? I'm going to ask you a question. If you want to raise your hand, Jazakumullah khair. If you don't, you answer. How many of us are, have made the intention that they will fast as many of these days, of the 10 days of the Hijjah? Not only Arafah. Again, don't show me hands. It's not about... It's, the question I want to ask you is, why not? You know why? But I miss this my morning coffee. You know, Sister Haif, I get this a lot. When I don't have this coffee at 10 a.m. in the morning, you don't know how much headaches I get. True or false? And then I say, so what do you do in Ramadan? Oh, that's Ramadan. I was like, what does that mean? You're the same person. It's your hawa, it's your inclination, it's your desires. Slaughter your desires for the sake of Allah. You cannot get close to Allah. Allah ladhi allahu. Allah is my witness. Those of you who memorize the Quran, you know what that means. You cannot do things to get you close to Allah and you are in your comfort zone. It doesn't work this way. True or false? You sit down and review your Quran for three, four hours and Allah knows I, I want to go and do something else. But I do it. Do it. The best days is coming. Yes, we are not in Mecca. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invite us all. And may Allah make us of those who he knows if we were allowed, we will have been there. And he will reward us. But let us be, as they call it, hajjul qulub. Your heart migrate to Allah. You know what's the name of hijrah? What does hijrah mean? Anybody knows? What does migration really mean? I'm sorry? Yeah, but what exactly it means? So I'm going to Allah, but do you know what it really means? You change your state or you change your place. You move from one part or one place to another. This is physical. Spiritually, literally, you migrate from everything that disobeyed Allah, everything that Allah doesn't like, and you move to everything Allah likes and loves. So you really don't move physically. You can be right now, right now here, and you are in a state of migration, and you didn't even move, or in your own home. That's another thing you want to do in these 10 days. Migration is when I change. What did he do, alayhi salatu wasalam? He left his home. 
Everything changed. This is what I need. Everything in me, externally, everything in me, internally, even my feelings, when I love and when I hate, when I get upset, when I'm so happy, why? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? Is it for Allah? Is it because of Allah? Then you have migrated. And the last thing he said, actually, this is, again, slaughter your desire. Slaughter your desire, meaning anything you want to do that will take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the answer is no. And then you have migrated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows, again, I'll say this and before I end up, Allah knows if we had the opportunity, and I definitely am speaking about myself, and I know a lot of you probably the same, he knows if we were invited, we would have been there now. I have close friends who live 40 minutes from Mecca. They live in Jeddah, and they couldn't go, and they cannot go. Not because of the COVID, but because there's rules there. You can't go every year. It has to be every five years. So I was telling my friends, it's only 60,000 people. What a hajj is this? So you're going, and she answered me, I wish, but I, they do not allow us. So it's not only us. There's people there, which is even harder, because you are so close, but Allah can reward you and me. Let's make this 10 days, starting from Sunday, bi'ithnillah, my migration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll practice it every single day, that when Eid comes in, I'm not only celebrating the Eid, I'm celebrating my freedom from my own desires, and I'm celebrating my station close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم أرينا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرينا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اجعلنا يا الله يا الله make us on the path of سيدنا إبراهيم هو جتباكم he chose you سماكم المسلمين من قبل وفي هذا he Sayyidina Ibrahim called us Muslims, not the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Ya Rabbi, Ameen, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Jazakumullahu khayran.